So our next, uh, our next presentation is securing voting systems beyond paper ballots. And uh, Todd Beardsley is the director of research for Rapid7. He's got over 30 years of hands-on security experience from uh, in-band telephony switching to moderate Internet of Things implementations. Had experience with 3Com, Dell, and Westinghouse as both offensive and defensive practitioner. Let's welcome Todd Beardsley. Hi. Thank you so much, Dan. Yeah, holy moly. I don't, like, I'm like three and a half times older than her and definitely not three and a half times better. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Hi. Uh, I'm director of research at Rapid7. And uh, congrats. You get to see my research project that I've just started. I have very little in the way of uh, real results. But let's go talk about them. Um, I'm a CVE board member. Member, I work with uh, Katie Trimble. She was here or, like two presentations ago. Um, you know, I've been around vulnerability disclosure for for quite a while now. Um, I was also an election judge uh, for a little while there. Uh, technically Republican. Um, it's super easy to be a Republican. Just vote in the primary, and then you get to vote twice against the guy you don't like. Um, so, um, I'm sorry. Oh, Texas. So, so yeah, so let's just jump into it, right? Um, a lot of what we see in the news today and a lot of what we see here at the uh, Voting Village uh, are all about um, the insecure voting machines. Uh, that is not this talk. I am not going to be talking about insecure voting machines at all. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. I am not denigrating anybody else's research. It's all um, you know, super important to cover that. Uh, you know, paper ballots are great. Um, there's a whole bunch of IT around them, namely um, th this uh, just got released a couple days ago uh, by Motherboard. Um, you know, reported by Kim Zetter that it turns out there's a whole IT infrastructure <laughs> supporting these voting machines. Um, and that's kind of where I live anyway. So I thought, hey, how about uh, I go talk to every county official I can find uh, all across America. Um, and I've, uh, I, I work at Rapid7, so I've, I've kind of dragooned my whole Rapid7 uh, state and local sales force uh, into dragging me into every meeting that they have now. Um, and it's fine. I get like five minutes, ten minutes with implementers, people who are thinking of buying our products, who are already like thinking about security. So it's a little bit of a self-selected population. Um, but yeah, so um, I guess what I'll go through now is uh, what I'm what I'm trying to. Uh, trying to ascertain here. First off, um, from the interviews I've had so far, uh, I'm, I'm very impressed with the in-house talent uh, at, state and, at the state and local level. Um, the, you know, I think we, a lot of us have an, a, a, I don't know, we, we have a cartoon of, a, of a, a government official in our head that's kind of not super happy with their job and it's a very not my job kind of attitude towards security. Um, that, like, I have not seen that. Um, and, and with the folks I've talked to, uh, they're very passionate. Um, they know where the problem, they know where many of the problems are. Um, they know that they are underfunded, understaffed, and hey, they sound like every other IT department. Um, they're not terribly unique in that but, that, but they're not like uniquely unqualified for this, for this challenge. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with the 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 caliber of talent I was surprised um, I I was you know just, I was the worst as well with this with this cartoon in my head of like what they were what what they were like right so um, so yeah the in house talent I think is is doing okay um, when I talk to them I ask them like so how are you securing your election systems they are super into air gaps um, as we see that doesn't always work so great um, you know the, uh, the there are sometimes the air gaps uh, you know they 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 touch <laughs> um, and that's no good right um, so uh, air gaps are great um, but the problem with air gaps is are are the unusual unknown places uh, where where you have these crossover points right um, the so as a core strategy you know not bad um, but like I want to get like kind of more into how can we bring uh, more traditional network security to to the election uh, infrastructure uh, starting with penetration testing penetration testing is super duper scary to people who run election networks um, they're kind of scary to people who run ne regular networks too like we've done a lot of work over the last 
20 years of kind of normalizing pen testing and normal production networks. Um, it was not that long ago where it would be insane to, <laughs> to hire hackers uh, to like knock over your stuff in production and now we do it like fairly, fairly commonly. Um, I want to bring this to the election networks, especially the ones um, that do last longer than election day. Uh, we can get into that a little bit. Um, oh yeah, yeah, the, on, on this one. So like a lot of times the biggest challenge for pen testing um, that has been reported to me is that these networks are very, some of these networks are very short lived in some districts. Um, these networks may live a day. Um, one day, three times a year. Uh, or six times a year, depending on like how many elections are are in that in that district and how much they're they're responsible for, which is which is rough. Like pen testing and production on election day is is fraught for sure. But hey, I mean, it's, I think it's something worth talking about. Um, I think it's you can definitely do some pen testing in a, like a mock election, um, like some that is absolutely going to take time, uh, money and training to, to bring up when it's, you can have a fake election day and unleash the hackers then, that would be, that would be delightful. Um, and uh, I guess fundamentally like I want to know as a pen tester, uh, I would very much want to know like the radio profile of the tabulation machines that spend most of their time powered off. When you power them on, what's their near field communication? What's their Bluetooth? What's their Wi-Fi? Are they, are they searching for this kind of stuff? Has anyone noticed? Has anyone checked? Um, that's that's one thing that I'm I'm very interested in in learning, and this is this is what I, I recommend on these these calls that I'm on. Um, I'm 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 interested in the threat modeling. Um, you know, I, again, like I'm not going to be talking too much about the physical attacks on the the local physical attacks on the uh, voting machines themselves. Um, but I am interested in where um, these state and local governments think the bad guys are coming from and what their goals are. Um, you know, obviously, it doesn't really matter too much if an attacker can do a couple things, right? They can be subtle and they can change a few votes, say. Like, let, let's just notion, notionally, if you can change the votes in the tabulation system, you could change a few and, you know, maybe get your guy. Uh, or you could change a lot and, uh, you know, kind of ruin democracy. Um, I'm pretty sure that um, most people that I've talked to um, that are working in IT here are concerned about the latter much more than the former, which I think is accurate and, and real. Um, I, I think that's a, a, a useful thing to do. Um, when it comes to a physical attack though, like, you know, there, one of a favorite, favorite attacks is, you know, scattering, you know, poison USB sticks in the parking lot and waiting for someone to pick it up and plug it in where they shouldn't. Um, is that the kind of attack that would be useful for an adversary? Um, maybe not so much on election day, but maybe two weeks, three weeks, a month before election day. Is that the kind of thing that uh, we're training uh, these IT professionals to keep an eye out for? Uh, so things like that. Um, vulnerability management um, in uh, these, with the nodes in these election uh, systems is, is not great. Um, like I said, a lot of times these, these uh, endpoint machines are powered off. Um, they don't, you know, they don't get normal scan and patches, right? Um, they're not, they're not subject to that, uh, that regime. And as a result, <laughs> It turns out there's a lot of Windows XP, right, still living in our, uh, in, in state and local government. Um, you know, it's, it's okay because they never touch the internet and they, <laughs> no one's actually like reading their mail or doing anything on these things. Again, like this is where pen testing can start testing that assumption. Um, you know, and that's really what pen testing is about. It's not so much testing your technology, it's just testing your assumptions about those technologies. Um, you know, like if I had like a rock solid guarantee the bad guys could never get into my internal network, whatever that is, um, you know, I might not care so much about patching or passwords or 2FA or anything like that, right? But um, I don't know un until I test. So I think uh, coupling um, uh, pen testing and like normal pen testing, normal vulnerability management would go a long way uh, toward, towards helping these, these folks out. Um, a lot of times uh, the IT uh, administrators of these election networks have to deal with multiple data sources. Um, it's something we don't often talk about. Um, we often think of like 
election day and we have the voting machine and then those get put on a USB and then driven over to the high school gym and then they all get read in. But there's other data sources, right? There's absentee voting, there's provisional ballots. Um, more and more states are supporting internet voting, um, mostly for, these days it's mostly for uh, military uh, folks. Um, they're voting over the internet. Um, as an attacker, like those secondary sources are, are gold for me. Um, I very much want to uh, get into those because I know those are even less tested. Um, it's more unusual and so like this, this, this is the recipe for bugs, um, bugs and vulnerabilities. Like, and again, like I don't have to be subtle here. I, if I can, the, for example, like a write-in candidate on a absentee ballot is a super manual process. There is a person who tends to write that thing down. Um, if I can fake up a million of these, like, hey, that's, that's pretty great. Like, I can now throw all absentee ballots away. Um, so that might be useful for someone who is uh, not, not super interested in having stable elections. Um, when it comes to, uh, you know, the, it is election night, um, it's time to transmit uh, the, the results, usually up to the state from like a local district or county or parish or whatever. Um, it was uh, made apparent to me that there are many ways to do this across. This is one of the problems, of course, that we, we are talking about a lot with, with running elections in America where we don't have one federal election. We have thousands of local elections all on the same day. Um, and they all have their own special way of, of transmitting results. Um, almost always this is over some kind of extranet. Um, it might be secure email was told to me once. I don't know what that is. Um, it, there might be VPNs. Um, there might be... I don't know, it might be an FTP server. Um, you know, we've seen that uh, before. So uh, I know one, so Illinois in particular um, is, has already kicked off the Cyber Navigator program, which is like the coolest name ever. Um, I don't mind saying cyber, I'm one of those. Uh, but uh, the Cyber Navigator program, part of that mandate is a whole pile of money for what is essentially a, uh, a, a private ISP um, that these uh, election officials all, all are on. Um, and so it's pretty robust. Um, it's probably the most advanced network out there for transmitting results um, that, we, that we have today. Um, so I, if you, anybody here work in state and local government, by the way, I've been bagging on you guys a lot, but uh, you are doing God's work, so thank you. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, like I think that uh, what we need to be doing here is having regular and routine reviews of these, these extranet touch points in particular. Um, again, sometimes they are very short lived, sometimes they're on all the time. Um, so like if they're on all the time, this is a, this is a great place to start thinking about pen testing. Um, pen testing, vuln management, all the things. I'm, I'm going to say a lot of the same words over and over again. Um, finally, I want to talk a little bit about sudden upgrades. <laughs> uh, we're going to have a lot of these uh, by the end of the year. Uh, many, many districts uh, have state mandates to refresh and uh, update their election infrastructure, mostly in the form of these uh, uh, voting machines. Um, we, we did it, guys. <laughs> we told everybody to update these things, and now they have to actually use them. Um, this is a little bit of a disaster for them. Um, they have 20 years of tooling uh, that now they have to suddenly make sure works with whatever the new shiny is that they don't even know what it is yet, um, because it's still, you know, there are, are districts and communities that are still figuring out which, you know, which of the usually three um, uh, manufacturers are they going with, how is that going to work, who's going to run it, are they going to be contracting that out. They've got 20 years of, of sometimes very custom, very local scripting. Um, and if this sounds like a disaster recovery nightmare, it is. Um, that's, um, and this is going to be a slow rolling disaster starting in December, culminating in around March when the primary elections are. Um, so congrats. So I'm sorry. <laughs> we were very good at that telling you that the voting machines suck and now you get a whole new pile of suck to go with it. Um, and you have three months to do it. So hey, we can all do anything in three months, right? Um, yeah, that's going to that's gonna be hard. Um, and speaking of disasters, um, there is one other uh, area I want to cover that I, that I talk about a lot is disaster recovery. Um, in the last, what is it, last six months, eight months, a lot more municipalities uh, are getting, have been getting hit with ransomware lately. It's a trend. Um, and, you know, why do you rob banks? Because that's where the money is. Apparently the money are in small uh, cities and towns uh, for, for ransomware folks. So uh, this is, uh, this 
this is, this, I, I cannot imagine like the cyber insurance industry. I don't know how cyber insurance works at all. Uh, and I don't think anyone does. <laughs> and everyone's losing their shirt over this, so it's going to be changing real quick. Um, but uh, these, these localities have to be treating, you know, fire, flood, and ransomware like all as the same thing. Um, I, I would love to be able to pay my way out of the path of a hurricane. Um, hurricanes however don't also have like sideline jobs in you know child sex trafficking which sometimes is what ransomware's funding um so not super cool to pay that off so naughty naughty i understand it's your data but like i don't know um test your test your disaster recovery a ton um so anyway uh this is the project i'm working on right now i should have like real results and stats like this is super rough and i'm and i'm very happy and thankful for dan for for uh having me up here today uh dan and mary um but uh, I, I th believe by, oh, before March, let's say RSA, right, or maybe South by, um, I'll have actual data on all of this stuff, like what are people actually doing, you know, some better data points. Um, one of the stories, uh, the Politico story that I cited at the beginning uh, often has, has a mention in there where political, Politico uh, we're able to survey IT folks, um, you know, several hundred of them. And so, like, the IT departments around the country are responsive to this. Um, they do want to talk about it, and that, that's very helpful for me. I'm happy I have an army of sales guys who will, like, rope me into these calls, um, you know, but, like, uh, I guess, uh, finally, uh, that's it. Um, I have a, a ton of time for question and answers. I will not take up all your time. I don't feel like I have to take all the time. Um, but uh, this is m m an opportunity for, m for me to hear, like, what do you want to see out of this, out of this project? It's very survey-based. Um, what are the kinds of things that you'd like to learn, ideally before March, when the primary season kicks off? You there are in the hat. Mm-hmm. It's not a one-size-fits-all kind of attack. It means that you have to modify your attack for every single one. Um, so sometimes what I'm saying here is that that actually makes the attack much more difficult to do. Instead of everything to use different versions and different systems and different types and different methods, I think one of the positives of all is that it's decentralized as well. Because that uh, it, it is many different roles, having many different places, <laughs> That's a great point. And just to, I guess, summarize, um, the, the, the comment was uh, the complexity works both ways. Um, you know, attackers are not super fa giant fans of complexity either. Attackers have hours and, you know, jobs and deadlines and, you know, deliverables and stuff, just like everybody else. It's so weird. Um, you know, and so, like, complex things are hard. Uh, and the decentralization um, of, of the U.S. election system has some upside in that, like, you don't get to upset the whole election, you only get to upset parts. Of course, the problem here is, as we've seen in, in the news over the last couple of years, is that the adversaries that we're most worried about are super good at profiling which districts matter. Um, which is why mainly, like, I'm very interested in talking to folks in Ohio, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Florida. <laughs> I don't super care about Texas elections. We'll, we'll go the way we go. Um, but those districts I do care about. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Oh, that's really interesting. Um, so the question is, does voting early uh, tip, tip our hand to the bad guy? Um, and if so, 
what do we do with it? Um, I, I think voting early actually solves one of the most fundamental problems we have with voting in America is that is voter turnout. Um, you know, internet voting, electronic voting, early voting, absentee voting, uh, voting by mail, all help with voter turnout, and that is. I, I think far and away the number one problem like and it's voter turnout is a security problem if if we had Estonian levels of voter turnout um, it would make the job of attackers much much harder um, because you know it's it's a larger voting pool and so like the kinds of changes you'd have to make would be com commensurately much much more significant um, so yes ma'am I cannot hear you uh -huh. Absolutely. Okay, so because I'm trying to visualize, like, like some of the some voting places are like in garages and stuff. But they mm -hmm. just like kind of have their own little tiny network, and then that stuff gets like. Driven. So the question was like, what what are some technical details about air gapping? I am super excited to be writing about that as I get more data on it. Um, but generally speaking, um, it means that um, notionally, anyway, the voting machine. Never, never touches the internet. Um, the tabulation happens either over serial or USB to a particular laptop that also has never touched the internet, um, and then results are then handed like sneaker netted over to other systems for uh, transmission and 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 um, the the live updates uh, for or given given counties, um, which is insane to me that I don't think it's actually a lot of sneaker and I think someone has snuck a cable in there somewhere, um, but we'll find we'll find out. Yes, in the green. So the, the issue, so the machine is a good thing, but what is the actual issue that you're seeing? For sure. Absolutely. So the the comment is that that the right. Yeah, and if you are trying to fool me as an election judge that like you're not you're no longer registered to vote or I've cha you know your name doesn't match my Byzantine ID laws. So the comment was uh, absentee voter fraud uh, <laughs> is a thing, and f for sure. Um, and uh, I, I do think that that the voter registration, the upside of the voter registration is that that is like in the purview of kind of regular IT um, for for these county, um, you know, county and state and local governments. Um, which tells me that that is that it's, they're much more amenable to things like traditional vuln scanning, traditional pen testing, uh, you know, traditional assessments, disaster recovery, all the all the normal things. They're not those are not on these like kind of weird ephemeral election networks that are like hard to test, patch, and, and maintain. Um, I think that's it. For, oh wait, no, I got one more in the orange right there. I'm pointing right at you. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think it's a great opportunity, right? Um, I mean, there is a lot of fear, and uh, <laughs> it, 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 they will come. I, I believe that um, uh, state and local governments are going to come kicking and screaming to the world of pen testing, just like the rest of networking did, and, the, and just like how corporate networking does. Um, I don't know, like a, a Fortune, what is it, Fortune 2000 company, uh, like every one of them has a pen test, and all of them are in production, um, and, and the economy is chugging along. Um, so I do think that the um, expanding voting time, so like having two weeks of early voting, oftentimes it is the same network. Um, those those networks are much longer lived, um, and so those would be a, a fine time. You're you're dealing with, even in the case of a disaster, hey, guess what? You get to test your disaster recovery power <laughs> now. So um, you know, and I'm flip about it, but uh, I, I do think pen testing is is crucial uh, to any modern, robust security solution.
So, and I'm a little biased. I used to be a pen tester too. So, um, but yeah, uh, I think I'm about done. So, thank you so much, folks. I will be hanging around uh, outside the hall here and uh, not blocking doorways. Uh, and if you want to talk to me more, great. Um, I am findable at keybase.io slash Todd B. So, Twitter, email, whatever. Um, thanks so much. And please, if you want to help out, I'm looking for collaborators. Thank you. Thank you.